Now the other third party, it could be a man, right? So let's uh, go to Ezekiel. <coughs> Ezekiel 3, reading from verse 17, says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman, watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth, doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, I, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul, and the hand of the Lord uh, was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will talk with thee. So I would say this is probably the key verse, because you know, I, I, I think I've, I've switched position, because this, this is probably was my position. But, you know, that's why I'm saying I don't think this is a definitive sermon, but there's two positions that I'm sort of rocking forward, back and forward between. But the next position I'm going to tell you is what I am swaying more towards. But the argument from this position would be, well, we see in Ezekiel that the watchman had a responsibility. And if the watchman did not warn the, the wicked person of the, the wrath of God, the judgment that was coming, the blood would be on him. Therefore, if we apply this principle to, the, to, to soul winning, if you don't tell that person that they're not going to be saved, hey, you, you have just caused them to go to hell. That's pretty much the reasoning. But let me show you here in Ezekiel. Uh, because when it comes to a third party being the reason why somebody cannot hear the gospel or cannot believe on Jesus Christ or goes to hell, you know, how does it, how does that, how is that righteous, how is that just in light of, you know, this verse in Ezekiel where it says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. You know, this principle that, you know, how, how is it, I mean, even in my own mind, how is it fair that another person goes to hell for the sin of another? Do you know what I mean? If that, if that person did not sin, but yet he's going to hell because somebody else sinned. And what do I mean by that? Is how is it fair if you, if you sin by not giving that person the gospel or not preaching the gospel to people, and that's the reason why they go to hell? Is that, is that, is that fair? I mean, in my own mind, like, that, that doesn't seem fair that, you know, I'm not, going to, to, I'm not going to hell because of my own actions or my own rejection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to hell because somebody else did not warn me about Jesus Christ. They, they didn't do that job. And I, you know, I know I've, I've, I've seen this poem. It's, it's a famous poem about the friend. I don't know if you've ever heard. I don't, I don't have it on me. I'm just thinking about it right now. But it's a poem about, you know, I, I walked with you every day and never did you show me the way. And basically it's a friend writing this poem, like saying this from hell, saying, you know, you, you were my friend and you walked with me every day, but you never told me about Jesus Christ. And now I'm in hell. Sort of that thought of, you know, it's, it's your fault that I'm in hell, not my fault. Not, I didn't reject Jesus Christ because you didn't tell me about him. But, but is that fair? That, because then, it, it, to me, it, it doesn't seem fair that, that they would go to hell because of that. And even when we look at uh, Ezekiel um, 3, you know, this is why we have to be careful when we get principles from the Old Testament because is it, does it only apply in an Old Covenant understanding? Can we... Can we uh, rightly move it over to the new covenant and still take that same principle, which is, is it the fault of the soul winner that the soul goes to hell for not telling him? Um, because remember, this is saying, this is talking about a physical judgment that's coming as well. That's the immediate context, a physical judgment that's about to come that is being warned of. But remember, he says that if you warn him, you'll also deliver your own soul. Right? But is that, does that how, is that how it works in the New Testament? No, because if you don't warn them, you're still saved. Right? You still believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that doesn't change anything. So is this, can this principle be directly applied to 
the New Testament understanding of winning souls and preaching, the, preaching Jesus and people um, being saved. Uh, I don't know, and this is sort of what make, makes me not take this position because you, you, this, is, would be, this would be the verse to say that it's the fault of the soul winner. Um, or you might say, you know, Romans 10, right? How shall they hear without a preacher? They need a preacher to be able to hear them. So I'm not saying that what we do doesn't make a difference because no doubt our actions make a difference, right? The Bible talks about, you know, how shall they hear without a preacher? So somebody needs to, to tell them in order for them to believe. What I'm getting at is does it need to be you? Um, no doubt our efforts make a difference. So when we go out soul winning, it's not in vain. You know, we should always abound in the work of the Lord. It does make a difference. That's why Paul says, you know, I might... Uh, you know, become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So he, what he did made a difference. Um, you know, Jude says, you know, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So I'm not saying that our actions don't make a difference. But I'll, I'll explain what I think might be the right position. But like I said, I, I'm sort of swinging between these two. So... We, we've talked about two scenarios so far. One is that God is responsible, and obviously, you know, that, that is false. Number two is it's a third, a third party is responsible, meaning, you know, either it's satanic or demonic or you as the soul winner, you're responsible. If you, and, and that's generally how it's preached, you know, in the churches that we come from is, you know, and, and I, I've probably preached it that way too. It's like, you know, if we, if we don't get the gospel to these people, then if they, if they're not going to hear the gospel and they're going to die and go to hell. But I'm just thinking, is, is that... Is that fair for that person? You know, like, because let's say we, we just backslide, you know, this church backslides and we just cease to exist anymore. Is it our fault that everyone in this area goes to hell? I just, I, like, that's hard for me to accept that that is fair, that somebody will be able to stand before God and say, I am in hell and you're, you've sent me to hell, but I did not get an opportunity to believe. And yet that person uh, is still justly sent to hell. 